Hello and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program, where we're still on our way upwards. Uh, in our second attempt at career, coasting towards apoapsis from the uh, in the same flight as the last episode, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just start burning equatorially, so that'll increase the apoapsis slightly. But it's also going to increase our horizontal speed drastically. So the aim here is just that we're in now in space. We can in fact get a full orbit from here now. Just by burning completely horizontally uh, relative to th carbon. And, in fact, we are about to. Or we were until we ran out of fuel. But now we will. Because we should have, in a moment, a periapsis. Which needs to meet up with us. And if that happens, watch this green light. Watch the periapsis. It's not going to quite meet up with us, but we have more than enough fuel to do this. And I'm going to turn... I can't turn on SA, I turn off SAS. I need to be careful of the, the thing. The um, electric charge. Because that's what killed the last space program. So at 100 times time warp, we get to the apoapsis quite quickly. Or near it. And what we're going to do from map view because things don't change too much in map view uh, you just can't see the craft moving around I am going to just a small little burn don't need to do much and we've got an orbit that is an orbit so I'm going to go back to the space center and what we're going to do now is we're going to have a look at what does this do? Can I upgrade this? I can't upgrade the tracking station of all things. Well then how do I... Oh, things have broken slightly so I'm just going to go to that. Why can't I upgrade the tracking station? I can. Orbits visible in map. Patched conics available in visible in map. I have no idea what that is. Max parts. Uh, increases the research science. Max parts supported. Oh, that's in SPH. Do 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 do. just increases the size of things. Okay, so, um, what we're going to do now is we're going to go back to Mission Control. And we're just going to have a look at the missions. Visual surveys are apparently suicide. In fact, we have 65 science, so what I can do is unlock these and hmm. Where are the... It's hilarious, they give you a load of space plane, space plane parts before they give you any kind of wheels. So... I think our next un unlock with our next 45 signs will be the general construction parts here, because I do have an awesome mod for the launch stability enhancers. Also known as launch clamps. So... What we're gonna do... Except this contract. And we're going to build another craft. What we're going to do is get rid of the orbit attempter 2. And we're going to start from scratch. We're going to do something very, very different here. 
So we're gonna need the parachute, Mark 16 parachute. Okay, and we're gonna throw on a decoupler underneath it. And we're gonna create a moon lander. So what we're gonna need for a moon lander? Well, we're gonna need a return stage, which can be built like that. But we're also going to need something that can actually land on the moon. So, why not have the moon landing stage decouple from the moon lander? And have slightly smaller tanks. Now, my only concern here is, in fact, we will hit the part count. Ha! Huh. And we're going to throw on some pretty junky engines onto that. Uh, as well as some legs. And for the legs, we're going to just switch on angle snap. Because it's a bit easier to line them up. They are perfectly ish in line. And we're just going to see how big a part count this moon rocket I have in mind is. Um, because I don't I don't really know how big it needs to be, essentially. So we're gonna have the same orbital insertion stage essentially. With a T forty five. And we're gonna throw in a bit of a different launch stage, so I actually need these two to be separate from each other. Because that would cause trouble. Uh, do, 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 do. We're going to need some stack decouplers. Well, another stack decoupler here. And now we're going to throw on another, we'll say, three fuel tanks as a launch stage. Now, you probably know that the T-45 won't get it well. Oh, that's why. Which engine is which? That one, and then that decoupler there. Yes, that is less than one. Um, it's a TWR of less than one. However, if we throw on four booster rockets, it's still less than one because they've gone on to the wrong stage. Now it's a TWR of two. And we have hit the part count. Holy cow, I think I can do it. So, this is the moon attempter. Um... Let's see, if we won't use Apollo, we'll use Zeus 1. I know it's not exactly like the Apollo missions. Um, we're also going to need a second pilot, because at the moment all we have is um, a scientist and an engineer. Now, they'd be nice, but I'd prefer somebody like... Frokey Herman, who is really stupid. And we're going to throw Frokey Herman into the mix straight away because pilots are always good. It gives me SAS. Science is slightly reduced, but I don't mind. So that is Zeus 1, complete with Frokey Herman. And, um. Let's get this moon attempt off off the road <laughs> off the pad um, so in five four now it's falling over I don't want to tempt fate so Zeus one is clear of the pad clear of any tower there may be and 
and ascending towards space. Using a lot of fuel on the way, but the uh, four retro rockets I have installed are kind of like that. So, the joy of this is we're not actually going straight up, we're going up at a slight angle, so that's actually helpful in our gravity turn phase, where um, our horizontal speed is already 5.5 meters per second. We're going to be increasing that massively, we're way short of what we need to get off carbon yet, or to even get, get um, orbital around carbon. Now, here is our target the moon uh, which is not in the sky at the moment and I've clicked outside of the game so the moon isn't up yet which is good it actually gives us time to get up into the air before moonrise so I'm gonna boost up the thrust which boosts up the noise and just we're gonna have to get orbital ASAP and hope to high hell that this is actually capable of getting to the moon. Because we're already on the, essentially the orbital stage. I need to focus on carbon again. Uh, we're not gonna get, um, hmm. We're not gonna get to the moon with this particular rocket. Although we might if I actually did a gravity turn. I'm going to see how close to the moon we can get. I may have to abandon this mission for pretty much reasons of I'm never going to get to the moon and back with it. But we're going to see how close to the moon I can get. If I can get an Apollo 9 slash 10 style lunar orbit out of it, I'll be happy. Um, I know that this is a single ship, whereas Apollo is actually two ships, the um, command module and the landing module. I can't do that at the moment because there's no docking capability in game. Let's see if we can even get this thing into orbit. Because now I've got my concerns this thing isn't even an orbital vessel. So, yeah, Zeus 1 is a, an absolute disaster. So now we're going to burn retrograde. Uh, this was a training mission. It was a simulation. Well, it was a training mission for Froka. And, well, the guys didn't really get it up to the kind of speeds they thought they could. So... Froka is now riding on essentially a ballistic missile because he forgot to turn off the engine and he has no way of checking how much fuel it has. Um, and now he's lost control. Well done, Froka. So let's just watch the app apps jump around. <laughs> now. Um, this engine will eventually run out of fuel. When it does, he'll start falling towards the ground because there is no way he's getting into orbit. So I think we're going to end this episode with the Orbit Attempter 1, which I will actually rename Orbiter 1. I can't do it from this screen, so I'm just going to turn up Time Warp a bit for Froke. Bring it into Fizz Warp. And the ship is going to actually turn. I love this. The aerodynamics of the ship are such that it will always turn. So that what would be the heat shield is facing downwards. Always. Um, there we go. Oh dear. Never ever ever allow that to happen where they... Uh, shoot deploys under fizz warp because there is a very real chance you blow up your ship. Ship. <laughs> I know what some of you might have thought I said, but no. I try and keep this PG. Oopsie. 
Oh well, didn't blow up anything. Um, yeah, occasionally the parachute has a habit of just flying off when it deploys like that. So we're gonna actually have to land this with fizz warp off. So we're 30 meters up, 20 meters up, 10 meters up. Three, two, one, two. And we will get a crew report. And keep the data and recover the vessel. So let's see how much science we got from that um, failed attempt. 6.7 and 910 funds and Froke Carmen is back. So we're going to hop into the tracking station. And can we do that from here? We can't really name it from here. So we're going to go back into the orbit attempt or two. And we're going to rename the vessel mid-flight to Orbiter 1. So this is now Orbiter 1. Orbiter 1 is going to turn off its damn SAS and burn retrograde to hopefully conduct a very safe and that'll do it so orbital stage can now be jettisoned orbital 1 is about to do the uh, first <laughs> The first air braking maneuver in the history of this space program. Okay, watch the parachute. The parachute has detached itself from the module. That's what Fizz Warp does, people. That's what Fizz Warp does. We're just gonna spin it up and get it at a good spin, and now we'll let. You see Jeb Vision. Oh yes. Oh yes, such spin, much wow. We are falling rather quickly. I should probably deploy the chute. Okay, spinning up now. And deploying parachute. Parachute is ready to deploy. And slightly off the vehicle, apparently. So we're just going to turn on this ace again. And it's going to settle. Okay, so parachute is deployed. We're going to spin up so that the parachute does its job. Yep. Yep, that's realism right there. The parachute has detached itself from the vehicle, but is still working somehow. This is what I do when I'm off camera and playing in my uh, sandbox save game. Is just see how fast I can spin things. That was quite fast. So yeah, we're just going to get a bit of spin going. The atmosphere is going to stop it, essentially. Um, so yeah, I think that's about all for this episode. It's a bit short. A bit shorter than other episodes, but... Um, Trust me, there'll be some long ones in in the future. So, whoopsie. Um, I'll leave you by saying I have been Rainbow Dave. You've been watching Kerbal Space Program. Thank you very much for doing so. Uh, please comment, like, and subscribe. I will see you next time when the <laughs> wheelmobile is finished rolling down this hill. And yes, this is realism. Realism has it at its finest. I've killed Jeb. Well...
I have killed him this time. Oh my god. That was so stupid of me. So, uh... I'm just gonna get in the second pilot there to be on the safe side. Uh, we've done it again. Goodbye.